everyone, my name's Michelle and this is my channel Sewing Bunny and welcome to my sew along today which is for the McCall's 7874. Now if you've been watching my channel for any length of time you'll know that I do a monthly sew along based on um, some projects that I put up for a vote on my channel and this is the one that you guys voted for and it's also one of my make nine um plans as well so i'm really excited to get this made up so i'm going to be going for view c which is this one here and i'm kind of more or less copying um what the pattern envelope shows i'm not sure if you can sneak peek my fabric over there i'm doing something very very similar but this is the version that i would like to make so you can see that it is a uh, jumper pattern with some paneling um you can't really see from the picture here but these cuffs have like little um thumb holes cut out and we've got pockets on here as well and then this uh, little sort of collar is looks like a sort of like a slight wrap um, sort of neckline so yeah really happy to get going on this <laughs> so I do have to say first off I do apologize that you can hear any noise um, outside our neighbor across the road um, we had some bad storms here a few weeks ago and um, his fences got all damaged so he's getting those replaced so I've been hearing like drilling and banging <laughs> a little bit this morning so apologies if you can hear any of that so what am I going to do first with this? First off, I want to make sure I um, get the right size. For those of you um, that may or may not know, sometimes these um, like commercial patterns, big four patterns, whatever you want to call them, uh, can sometimes be a little bit odd on the sizing. My experience is they're either pretty bang on um, or they come out quite large for your size. So I just want to make sure I'm careful in which size I pick. Now, this um, pattern on the back does have on this top um, flap here um, what um, measurements um, your body is, obviously, for the pattern. It does also have finished garment measurements on this section here, which is brilliant. Um, if you have maybe another commercial pattern, you may find that the finished garment measurements are actually on the pattern pieces. I found that quite a lot. So if you've got a pattern that doesn't have finished garment measurements on the back of the envelope, most likely it will be on the pattern pieces. But this one, thankfully, we've got both on the envelope. So my measurements, I am a 36 inch bust, I'm a 30 inch waist and a 40 inch hip. So I'm gonna have a look on um, this bit here to see what size I would fall into. So this pattern uh, goes from an extra small to a double XL. So I'm going to have a look and see um, from the measurements what I fall into. So um, my bust measurement will fall into a medium. That says that it's a 34 inch to 36 inch. So I'm kind of that top end of a medium. The waist, however, says 26 and a half inch to 28 inch. So that is a lot smaller than my waist. Um, the large does say that a waist is 30 to 32 so i would fit in the large category there the hip uh, for a medium says 36 to 38 again that's too small for me so the large says 40 to 42 so judging by this i'm sort of basically a medium on the bust and then waist and hip is a large so depending on what the finished garment measurements say, it might be a case that I want to grade between sizes. I'll be perfectly honest, when it comes to a jumper pattern, I don't tend to grade. Um, I just think a jumper, you know, I don't mind if it's maybe a little bit oversized. Um, I'd rather it be a little bit too big than too small. <laughs> um, and also this has got lots of panels on it. And so there'd be a lot of adjusting with things. But that's just my personal preference. Um, if you, you know, differ quite a lot between sizes and grading is the thing for you, absolutely fine, go for that. Um, it's just for me, I think I prefer to cut out just a straight size, either medium or large. So let's have a look at the uh, finished garment measurements. So let's start off with, say, the large, because that's the one that, you know, is probably maybe best suited for my waist and hips. And I can see that on here, I think a large is going to be too big for me based on their finished garment measurements. 
And what I want to do is I kind of just want to demonstrate a little bit because um, sometimes I find it a bit more helpful if I can visualise um, how big something is. So all I do is I grab a tape measure and whatever the finished garment measurement is, I just wrap it around and see what um, it would look like. So for a large, if I was to make a large, the um, uh, measurement of bust line is 45 inches. So that is quite a lot larger than my bust. I'm 36, but you obviously have to take into consideration wearing ease as well. So what did I say? 45 inches. So 45 inches is there. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to get the angle right, but uh, that is quite a lot of ease, I think, for me. I don't think I need that amount of ease at the bust. I think that is a bit too much. But I did say that probably a medium was better suited for me at the um, bust line. So for uh, the medium, it says it's 41 at the bust. Now that I think is a lot better. Again, I don't know if you'll be able to see, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's got some ease around there. And I think that's gonna be a lot better. It's certainly not too tight. Um, but it's not feeling like it is, you know, completely swamping me. So I think that would be perfect. So definitely size medium so far is uh, the one. <laughs> and then the next um, finished garment measurement is width lower edge. Now I am assuming that is hip stroke bottom of the jumper. So uh, like the hem. Um, so again, if I have a look at a large, which is according to the um, size range I should fit into. Now it's saying for a large, the um, hem, which I again I presume, 51 inches. That's 11 inches for um, added on to my hip measurement, which I think is going to be far too big for me. But let's have a look. So 51. So that's probably where it's going to be. Yeah. I think that <laughs> it's a little bit too much uh, for my liking. I don't think I need that amount of ease. <laughs> so um, let's have a look at the medium, which says it is 47. So 47 is here. So again, it's quite, quite a lot, but certainly not as much as the large. So I think that would be all right, to be honest. I think... I don't think I want to go much smaller than that. And if you think, you know, a jumper is kind of once it's on there, you want a little bit of room, don't you? So I think that's going to be all right for me. So I'm going to make the size medium. I think that's going to be the best one for me. And what I do is I trace my pattern pieces. So um, these commercial patterns are all on tissue paper. And of course, it includes all of the um, different um, views. So you just wanna make sure you're careful in only picking the view you want. So I'm doing view C, so I'm just gonna make sure I'm only tracing out view C um, on the pieces. So I'll pop you on a time-lapse um, so you can just see me doing a very quick trace um, of the pattern and then I'll come back to you to then get cutting uh, my fabric. <laughs>
Okay, so my uh, pattern has been traced and cut, ready for cutting my fabric. And I did notice there's quite a lot of like markings on these pieces. So um, like you'll get ones like, you know, with like these little circles um, and triangles and things like that. So yeah, it probably is just worth making sure that you add any of those little markings in because yeah, there are quite a few <laughs> of these little markings. So yeah, just make sure that you've done that. Um, also, what I like to do is I like to grab um, the section um, which tells you what pieces you need. And so what I do is I just count how many pieces. So I know that I needed 10 pieces. I've got 10 pattern pieces so that I know um, I'm all good. So, yeah, now on to um, getting some fabric cut. Now I'm doing, um, I'm, a pattern envelope. Um, I'm doing this version which has contrast um, pieces in. So I just need to make sure I'm careful which pieces I'm cutting out of what. So, um, for instance, actually that's a good example. Um, I've got this one, which is say like the lower band. Excuse my awful handwriting. Um, and I've written on here, um, contrast. So I know that I need to cut that out on the contrast. Um, and I think there's probably another piece as well. Yep. So I've got there as well, so contrast. So I just need to make sure I'm careful which ones I'm doing on one type of fabric and on the other. So my fabric, <laughs> um, if you'd seen my plans video, you would have already have seen these. As I mentioned, I am uh, trying to copy this version. So I've got for my main um, sort of pieces, this lovely cozy colours sort of, um, I don't know quite what colour you'd call it, sort of like oatmeal sort of colour, I guess. But um, it's got these lovely little flecks of colour, like with these like sort of oranges and blues and things. So that's going to be lovely. And then I also have some plain black. And this is a um, like a fleecy back sort of sweatshirting. You can see there that it's all nice and fleecy. Uh, this one's also nice and fleecy as well. So I believe um, for my size, I think you needed around a metre and a half of your main fabric and then around about just over a metre of your contrast fabric. So yeah, I've actually got a metre and a half each of those. So I will have plenty. And it is a good idea that I did cut out the size medium because I didn't actually realise that, um, yeah, this actually is um, a pattern that you buy um, like two separate envelopes. So I think you get your um, small, your extra small to medium in one and then your large to double XL in another pattern envelope. As you can probably see here, I, I didn't actually notice. So it's a good thing that I did actually realise um, that and I didn't want to cut out the large. <laughs> so that is something to bear in mind, especially if you are grading between sizes, that you do actually have to buy two separate envelopes a lot of the time for these things, which I must admit, I do find really annoying because I, I can't remember which brand it is. I don't think it's McCall's. I think it might be like Simplicity or something where they literally cut off right where I want to grade between sizes, which is really annoying sometimes. Um, so it sometimes puts me off buying the pattern. Um, if you get them in like sewing magazines, you tend to get the full size range in the pattern envelope, which is really good. But I just don't know why they don't do that for like normal patterns. But anyway, that's my bone out of the way. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, but this one is the right size for me, so that's all right. So I'm going to get cutting out the fabric. And again, I'll just put you on a whizzy fast forward so you can see me doing that.
I now have my fabric cut out. Um, you may have seen um, that I missed out piece on my contrast. I thought there was only three pieces, but there's actually four. <laughs> so I'm glad I did have a metre and a half. Um, otherwise, I think I may have struggled a little bit um, getting that out. Um, but yes, I would say, yeah, metre and a half was perfect for the main fabric. I think I had about 20 centimetres or just over 20 cent uh, centimetres left over. Um, so if that's going to help anybody, if you've got any remnant pieces or anything. Uh, but yes, I'm glad I had a metre and a half of each, just to be sure. <laughs> Okay, so now I've done that, um, I'm going to go to the instructions and see what the first step is. So we've got, uh, so for all views, okay, it's saying to stay stitch a, a section, but it's knit fabric. I don't know whether that's just me. Why would you need to stay stitch knit fabric? It's not gonna like stretch out because it's already stretchy. I don't know. I'm gonna take a gamble and I'm not gonna do that step. <laughs> if you wanna do that at home, absolutely, go ahead. But I don't know, in my brain, I don't quite understand why you would stay stitch knit fabric. I could be wrong, it may not work, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next step. And also I'm going to be overlocking a lot of this. Um, it's not to say you can't use a sewing machine for things, you know, absolutely fine. I've got plenty of things that I've just done on my sewing machine, um, but I'm going to be overlocking a lot of this stuff. There's a bit of top stitching, so I'll be using my sewing machine as well. Um, but anyway, <laughs> right. So the first one that I'm going to do is pin the yoke fronts to the uh, upper, upper edges of the front. Okay, let me grab my pieces. Right, so I've got my front piece here, and we're gonna be working up at the top up here. Um, sorry, my fabric's quite curly. <laughs> uh, so yes, it's these um, bits here, the sort of shoulder bits that we're working with. And then you grab your um, little yoke pieces, and you'll see they're sort of, um, got one side that's shorter than the other this is like the longer side and the longer side is what's going to line up along this bit here so I've got the longer edge here and that is what I'm doing right sides together on uh, the jumper so I'm laying that right sides together and again um, this yoke piece I've got the longer bit um, at the top and lie that right sides together and you'll see that the notches should match up pretty well so I'm going to overlock that and then it says to top stitch it down so once I've overlocked it I'm going to turn it the right way out and then I'm going to top stitch it down as well on my sewing machine so I'll do that and then I'll show you uh, that afterwards step is done so I've attached my yoke pieces and I've top stitched so um, you can see there on the back that I have overlocked it and then at the front I've top stitched it down I do need to give it a press um, because it's a little bit wavy but that's because I haven't actually pressed it yet so I'm going to go out and give that a press and uh, yeah that's the top stitching done there so you're top stitching on the yoke side so you're pushing the um seam allowance up towards the yoke and then top stitching oh i've got a loose thread um yeah top stitching there now yes i have used just a standard um straight stitch along for top stitching now i've done that because i've overlocked um the actual seam that means that the seam um is strong enough obviously to cope with the stretching so you can see I'm still stretching it there. And the top stitching is literally just decoration. 
It's entirely up to you if you'd want to use a zigzag stitch to do top stitching. But I personally find because this isn't going to be a close fitting, you know, it's not going to be like a turtleneck <laughs> type, um, you know, kind of stretchy top. It's a jumper. So I think um, straight stitching as top stitching will be absolutely fine. Um, if anyone's wondering, I'm using a size 90 um, stretch stitch needle or stretch needle, not stretch stitch needle, uh, stretch needle. Um, and so that's working for me absolutely beautifully so far. So that's that bit done. Let's see what the next step is. So the next step is to work on the pocket. So I've got my pocket um, pattern piece and uh, fabric here, and this does have some little circular dots on it. So I'm going to first off transfer those um, to the fabric just with a piece of chalk. I've got a chalk pen uh, here. This is the one I use. Um, anything I do use in this video, um, where possible, I will link um, where I got them down below. There may be some like Amazon sort of affiliate links and things because I bought them off Amazon um, and I'm recommending. So I get a little tiny percentage of the sale. It doesn't cost you any more. Um, and then anything else that I have, I will see link down below uh, and I'll let you know if they are affiliate links or not. So, um, yes, I'm going to mark out um, these dots. Um, I'm going to do it on the reverse of the fabric because I don't think we're going to need it on the right side of the fabric. So I'm going to mark those. Um, I'll do that quickly and then I'll come back. Right, I've marked my markings <laughs> now. I don't know how useful they'll be for me, but I've put them in there just in case. Um, and I thought this might be um, a good step to show you possibly with the pattern piece, because the picture in number four, it's a little bit weird. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was like, mm, that looks, looks a little bit odd. Um, so I know what I'm doing, but I just kind of thought it'd be easier for me to explain it um, with the pattern piece. So this um, pocket, this is the wrong side up. So I've got the right side here, and this is the wrong side. So that uh, matches up with that pattern piece. And if I can show you here, we've got a fold line here, and it's asking you to fold that down. So I'm just gonna fold on that line. And then so if we see from the wrong side, because this is the wrong side, that's the right side, um, that it creates this little uh, flap. And then it's asking you to baste um, down these edges just here. So you're not doing anything along here, just basting down these edges. So if I do it on the actual fabric, um, so if I fold that down on that fold line, so those dots will help you to see where the fold line is. I mean, to be honest, when you fold it, it kind of all matches up quite nicely anyway. And so then um, you can see there that matches up really nicely. Uh, so I'm going to do that. What I am going to do, though, is this edge up here. I'm going to overlock because I'm going to overlock that. So then it means on the wrong side, once it's folded in, it means then I'm going to have a nice, clean uh, finish on the edge there. So you don't have to do that. You can leave this uh, raw if you want, because I mean, my fabric doesn't fray or anything. It would be absolutely fine to leave as is. But I like that overlocked um, look. So that's what I'm going to do now. And then I will show you what that looks like uh, once I've done it. That step is done. So you can see now I've got overlocked um, edges there and I've basted just these ends. You see, just there. Now, in the instructions, it does say um, to baste along this bit here so that then when you top stitch, you can um, basically follow that basting line and then take your basting stitches out. Uh, so you can do that. Um, I'm just going to top stitch directly um, on here because I can feel um, where my um, overlocking is so I know where I'm working to so then I can measure on my machine kind of um, a top stitching line but if you want to baste it in place that's absolutely fine follow the instructions um, but for me I can probably top stitch this no problem because what you can probably see I'm looking at the camera there I can almost see this line already 
um because i've given it a good press okay so i'm going to do that top stitching and then i will show you that after okay so top stitching you can probably see just there that is done i basically on my machine followed my three centimeter um line with all the way down and that's given a really really good result so you can just see i've just cat caught the um the overlocking there so it's really really nice and secure there so yeah happy with that so that's on both pockets so let's see what is next right so now it's attaching the pockets onto that front piece that we've done those little yoke sections so uh, near the bottom you'll see some double notches so on your pockets um, on the longer edge here you'll also have some double notches so you want to do that right sides together and then you want to sew um, on that side and then exactly the same on the other side right sides together and sew down here so you don't want to baste them in as such you actually want to properly sew them in I'm not going to overlock because I need the whole thing across here to be able to overlock it to get a good finish. But I am just going to um, sew these in place like normal. So the seam allowance for this is 1.5 centimetres. So I'm going to make sure that I am sewing at 1.5 centimetres. You may find it useful um, to grab your pattern piece for your pocket. So yeah, this is the pattern piece of the pocket and this is the pattern piece of the front. And you'll notice, uh, so on the pocket piece, so I've still got this bit folded, but um, we made that um, little dots on either side. So it's this dot that you want here. And then also on your pattern piece, you will also notice that there is a dot here. I'm hoping I can explain this well enough. Um, but what it is, is you want to match up those dots. So if I basically pop this on here let me just grab a clip right. I just th I'm just thinking this will help explain it a little bit better but what I've done is exactly what I've done here is I've attached the pocket piece um, onto the front piece so you can see that's kind of what um, it looks like and can you see um, the dot on this long edge and the dot from this um, front piece have now matched up in place can you see there so that's what you want on your um fabric you want to know where that dot is so i'm going to line up this as it is there on my um pattern piece because again i can see where my double notches are and i'm actually going to make sure i mark that um dot and the reason why I mark it is because I think that dot is going to be quite important because I think you've got to snip into the um, fabric. So you want to try and make it as accurate as possible. So I really hope that makes sense um, on there. I just kind of find that is a little bit of a better way to do it on the actual pattern pieces. And then you can kind of visualise it when it's on your fabric. So I'm going to do that and uh, then I will come back to you. So I stitched that in place. I'm hoping you might be able to see my little green dot and then I've sewn down there. I'm really hoping that shows up. <laughs> so what it's saying now is, yeah, you've got a clip into it. But the only bit you want to clip is the front um, fabric. So if I turn this um, back to where when we sewed it, um, I might just do a quick close up, that might be helpful. So it's saying for you to clip up to this circle. You don't want to clip this pocket. You only want to clip the um, front fabric. So you just want to clip up to that circle just there on both sides. 
Okay, so I've done that there. So I've clipped up to that circle just on the front bit of the fabric on both sides. So I'm just now trying to work out in my mind how I'm going to get my overlock um, sort of edge on these sections and also um, these as well, just because of the way that the pattern is. Just trying to get it in my mind. <laughs> I can't quite get there, but I'm going to try and um, do what I think um, I can do. I'm sure there's probably going to be a better way, but I'm just thinking a little bit uh, to see what I can do. So what I am going to do is I am going to overlock um, these um, bits here. So where I've cut in, I'm actually going to overlock just that section down here. So just that bit, because I need to leave this cut open to be able to fit in the contrast um, panel. So I need to leave that there. So I can't overlock the whole way because I need that gap. But I'm thinking if I don't overlock this edge just down here now, I don't think there's going to be an opportunity for me to do it. I do want to try and um, and get sort of that finish if I can. I mean, to be honest, if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. But I'm hoping that will work. So yes, I'm just going to, now that I've cut into those, I'm just going to overlock um, those down as well now so I'll see how I get on with that okay so just off camera I've um, overlocked that so um can you see there I'm really hoping that kind of shows so I've got my um my cut there and what I've done is I've just sewn those two layers together with the overlocking I haven't cut any when I'm doing the overlocking I've just literally just overlocked the edge so if I have made a mistake then I can hopefully um rectify if needs be but i think that's right at least i think <laughs> i think a lot of uh with this is a bit of trial and error but i think that's right so i think the next step now is to top stitch that down uh so uh yes it is so what it is is um you need to top stitch it down so you need to press just making sure I'm getting this right. <laughs> so I've got um, the wrong side up. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, so wrong side up. You want to make sure that these uh, seam allowances that I've just literally overlocked are pushed towards the centre front. Yep, so they're pushed in that way. And so then that means on the other side, if I flip it over, once obviously those are pressed, ooh, paper flying, um, that you top stitch um, on the front piece down the front there. So you're just top stitching just this section. You're not going up here. You're just doing from the pockets downwards. So from that little dot that you've done, you want to top stitch downwards and because you've pressed the seam allowances in underneath it means it'll keep it nice and flat underneath okay so i'm going to do that uh, press it uh, top stitch it and then i will show you what that looks like okay so that is now top stitched if you can see that, sorry, bit of sunlight there. <laughs> so yeah, top stitch down there and we can see that those seams are facing um, towards the inside. So they're lying nice and flat because we've pressed it and top stitched it. So it's looking really nice. Uh, so let's have a look and see what is next. Okay, so we need to grab the um, side front piece. Okay, so it's saying to uh, make a mark on the front of the um, side front piece so there's a marking on your pattern piece which is this circle here that circle that uh, you want to mark on your pattern piece because it's asking you to reinforce some corners so if you make those markings and then I will go over the next step okay so I'm moving the front piece out of the way 
this is the side panel section and can you see in those corners I've made some little green dots so what it's asking you to do is to reinforce um, corners on there so where you've made the mark so you want to sew down and then you want to pivot the machine and then make a right angle um, here so you want to reinforce those corners because you're going to be clipping into um, these curves to that dot so you want to make sure that it's really reinforced so I'm going to go over that and I'm going to go forward and back a little bit as well just to make sure that those corners are really nice and strong so I'll just do that quickly now and then show you So I've uh, just done that and uh, yes I know that I haven't done black <laughs> thread but I don't think it really matters but um, I've reinforced those corners there so now I just need to clip into them. And there we go, you can probably see now I've clipped into those uh, corners. So now I need to grab my front piece again. Right, I'm gonna try and explain this the best way I can. <laughs> so this is the um, side um, piece facing with the right side of the fabric up. And I'm gonna grab my uh, front piece and I'm gonna lay that again with the right side up over the top and just roughly line up that because this is sort of what you want it to kind of look like as the end result but you need to attach these seams together so I'm just going to do a little bit of a close-up which I hope might help explain a little bit okay so I hope this angle might show it um, okay so um, I was laying this out so that this is kind of the result you want it to look like but you need to add these seams together. Now you've got down here the cutout, which we've done, plus can you see the cutout here as well? So what you wanna do is you wanna kind of lie this over, so it's right sides together on this bit. Now, as you can see, you're trying to match this shape into <laughs> this shape. So you do just have to just take your time and go along and pin, if I can bring my pins closer. Because you're working with knit fabric, it's actually a lot easier. Can you see I've got uh, a notch here and a notch here? So you wanna line up those notches. Now you can see that there is some excess fabric, but what you have to do is you have to just try and ease it in can you see what I'm doing there? Just ease it in and pop a pin in because when it's the um, the right way out, once you press it, it will have a really nice finish. So you need to pin that all the way down to the bottom. And when you see these cutouts, then it's a case of, again, lining up those cutout pieces. Really hope that I'm showing that okay. And again, pinning that into place so and then just make sure keep following this along if you need to ease it just remember to give it a little little pull and it should all fit in nicely so just continue doing that the whole way down so there we go can you see we've eased all of that in up until that corner point so that when you turn it the right way out then it is joined. This bit will obviously end up going over. I know that's very rough, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's how you join that section. So once you've finished pinning, this is the wrong side up. So you're gonna have these sections pinned and then you're left with um, sort of like an opening <laughs> there. So I'm going to stitch these down and it says to stitch them down to where the dots are so where the green dots are where you reinforced it so i'm going to stitch down there and i'm also going to overlock 
Um, I'm not directly overlocking just because it's on a slight curve. Just want to make sure that it's all stitched um, nicely first. So I'm going to do a zigzag stitch down these and then overlock for a finishing seam. Now this um, section of the black fabric, um, this I think is going to be a raw edge, uh, so it needs finishing off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlock just this um, bit of the fabric because at some point I believe we're going to top stitch on the right side, um, sticking that down. So I want to make sure that this seam is nicely finished. So I'm going to get on the sewing machine and do that. And um, oh, hello. Miss D's come to join. You gonna say hi? Come on. Mind the pins. No? No, you're gonna go that way. Where are you going? No. Can't make up her mind. There we go. <laughs> oh. Okay, yes, people don't want to see your bottom. Yes. Wouldn't be a sew along unless Misty made an appearance, I'm sure. Um, so yes, I was going to say I will get sewing that and then I'll come back to you once that is finished. So now I have um, stitched that and overlocked it. I did have to unpick <laughs> one bit because I got the fabric a bit caught, so it did a bit of a pucker. It doesn't necessarily look that neat, but um, I have now overlocked um, all of those. Um, sorry, the sun's coming in now. Um, I have overlocked all of those edges and I've overlocked um, this bottom section as well. So the next step is it's just asking you to baste um, stitch both of these pieces together. Once again, sorry for the sunlight. <laughs> Try and move my curtain a little bit, maybe. There we go. Um, so yeah, I need, do need to give this um, a good press, but it is also saying yes to baste um, these bits down the side. Just give those a quick pin. Um, all the way down the bottom on here. So all the way along and then back up here because you want to end up treating all of this as just one piece. So I'm going to get that basted. I'm going to give it all a nice press and then I'll come back to you. given that a really nice press so it's all sitting really nicely so now we've got to uh, continue to top stitch um, these sections so we've already um, top stitched these sections of the pocket area but now what we need to do is carry on with the top stitching going all the way up to the top here so I'm going to, um, Misty's back again. In and out all the time, aren't you? Yes. Um, I'm gonna get that top stitched and then I will come back and show you. <laughs> yes, you're hungry. Get fed in a minute. is now all top stitched going up towards the top I will give it another press um, I did um, you might have seen from my fast forward I did have to unpick 
a little bit here because I started top stitching and it went a bit skew with so <laughs> I thought no I want it to be really nice and neat so I did unpick it and then start again and yeah I'm really happy with how they all sort of match up like I don't know if you can see oh my goodness this light is awful isn't it um so we did this original part of top stitching first and then I've just done this bit I think I've managed to get that section quite well matched up on both sides actually so really really happy with that so I think now the next bit is to top stitch this section here because um, we need to secure this um, part onto the back because at the moment it's just loose so we do need to um, to stitch that down so I do believe that we need to get that bit top stitched so I'll just have a look at the instructions on the instructions and just see if it gives me any tips okay so the instructions are saying that um, basically baste it in place so that you've got like a guideline to follow and then you top stitch it on there so um yeah I'll give that a go see how I get on and uh, yeah I'll show you the result once I've done that <laughs> So I've done that row of basting stitches, which has given me a little bit of a guideline to follow. I hope you can see that. So yeah, I've got this little line across there. Um, I've got no idea if you can see that, but it does give me a little bit of a guide to do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch it and I'm going to try and line it up basically from uh, the pocket. So carry on this line of the pocket use this basting stitch as a guideline to go along all the way to the other side of the pocket. So I'm going to do that and I will let you know how that turns out. Well, I don't think that's too bad. You probably see two lines now. <laughs> so um, yes, my basting stitches are just underneath my um, top stitching. So I'm now just going to pull out those basting stitches and give this a really nice press now that I've done the top stitching. So I just thought you might want to see um, the top stitching finish. So on both sides down there, um, then it obviously meets uh, the pockets and then I've done it all along here to go in line with the other pockets. Okay, so that is now the front bodice piece all constructed with the pockets and I really like the fact that I didn't actually realize this was like actually a, like a kangaroo pouch so of course when you put your hands in you could actually go all the way <laughs> in the middle as well I really really like that so I'm actually going to leave it there for today because it's just gone five o'clock and of course I need to feed the starving kitties um, and then obviously make some dinner for myself and Stuart as well. <laughs> so I'll leave it there for today and I will catch you guys tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so we are on day two. I've got um, the next lot of pattern pieces all lined up. We've got our centre back panel here and then we've got the two um, side pieces and just like we did with the front we've got to sew these sections together so I'm not sure if you'll be able to see from your angle let me just move my tea out of the way um, so yeah I've laid it all with the correct sides up now if you line up these pieces you'll well find that um, this bit is slightly longer um, than matching up here. Now that's absolutely fine because when we turn it right sides together, when we line them up, again, there is um, a little notch at the top and you line it up and it is just a case of easing it around because yeah, you're trying to fit two opposite shapes against each other. But with knit fabric, just as I showed you in the front, just give it a little bit of a pull if you need to ease it in. Um, and I'm going to then directly uh, sew that, overlock it, and then it's asking you to top stitch. So that's going to be where we press the seam allowances towards the middle of the jumper and then top stitch all the way down here. Okay, so I'm going to get that done and then I will show you those results afterwards.
that is done. So um, I've stitched the back um, using my zigzag, then I've overlocked it. And then on the front, I've done uh, that top stitching. If you can just see there. Um, so yeah, just top stitched on the front piece. So now we can connect the back piece and the front piece. So let me just grab that. So we're joining them up at the shoulders. So we want the um, back piece facing up and the front piece uh, right sides together. And then we're just gonna line them up at the shoulder seams. You've got some notches there as well. So I'm gonna line those up. I'm going to um, directly overlock on those. I don't know if you need a top stitch. I don't think it says about top stitching. No, it doesn't. Um, it does say actually double stitch, um, probably because it maybe might need a bit more reinforcement. So I might do a zigzag and then overlock. Yeah, I might do that just because it is the shoulders. So yeah, I will um, do a zigzag, then I'll overlock, but I don't need to top stitch um, that seam in place. So I'll get that done and then I'll come back. So that is the shoulder seams all attached now. So uh, yeah, we've got a proper bodice um, coming along now. And next step is to uh, sew up the side seams as well. So I'm just going to directly overlock um, on these ones. So yeah, I'm just going to um, sew down these sides and uh, yeah, then I'll come back. So now I have my base of my jumper. I'm really, really liking the look of it. And I think, yeah, size wise, I think it's gonna be quite nice. I think it's gonna be quite roomy, but you know, not too oversized. So yeah, really liking that. Um, the next step is to work on the neckband piece. So I'm just gonna set this aside just for a moment. Okay, so I've got my neckband piece here, and this is with the fabric right side up. I'm going to make some markings because on the pattern piece we've got a circle and a triangle and I think that they will help when you're creating that wrap to know where you're putting things. So I'm going to mark the circle with my green chalk pen and I do also have a little bit of uh, pink chalk as well so I'll mark the triangle with pink so that um, I can just sort of tell the difference. So I'll do that and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I've marked that up. Uh, the next step is to fold this with the wrong sides together. So currently I've got the fabric right side up, so I need to flip it over and then fold it in half. And then it's saying once you fold it in half, just to pin it in place. So I will do that now. So now that we've got that all pinned in place, I'm going to flip it the other way around so that the circular side is towards me. And you've got um, two sets of notches um, on this side. So what you wanna do is you wanna match those up. So you wanna pop this side over and then this side you want to bring over until you can find those matching notches and you wanna pin those together. So let me just take that one out and pin there. And then the other one, again, match up those notches and then just place a pin in there. So you are left with 
this wrap neckline. So I don't know if you'll be able to see there, but uh, so you've got a notch here. So you've matched up both of those notches and you've got a notch here and you've matched up both of those notches. And that's how you create that uh, neckband. And then we've got to start um, yeah, matching it up. So we want to have a result, obviously, with that. So what you kind of need to do is you actually need to turn it inside out. And then place it so you're almost tucking in the neckline. And so you're matching it up that way because then what you're going to do is then turn it out so that um, it's facing the right way. So I may just do a little bit of a close up on that just so that uh, you can kind of see where I'm matching things. OK, so um, I thought I would do a bit of a close up, which may explain it a little bit more. So um, what I said before was let's put this the, the right way round first is that's how it needs to end up sitting. But to attach it, we need to turn this inside out. OK, so we've turned it inside out and then we need to attach it to the neckline. So you need to basically feed this through here. OK, so you've got um, the neck part with the collar like so. And then you need to start matching things up. Now, the triangle and circle symbols that I've kind of coordinated, I can't seem to see on the other pattern pieces. So I think it might just be helping you with lining up maybe the seams rather than like symbol to symbol. But what I'm going to do first off is the front. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see here, but we've got two notches at the front. And then we find those two notches on the wrap over section. Oh, I might have got that a little bit missed there. Right, so we've got a notch here on the wrap and a notch here. So that's where we've lined it up. So you want to line up those notches. So you've got the notch on the front piece, the notch on the wrap. Pop that there and then pop a pin in. And then the second notch from the wrap with the notch on the front. Take that pin out and reposition it. It's going to be quite a few layers going on, I think, here, <laughs> as you can see. Um, and then, yeah, so I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see, but I've got my green dot here. And can you see that that green dot is lining up quite nicely with that seam. I hope you'll be able to see that. So then you can use that as another guide. So pop a pin in there. And then also you can see the hopefully the pink dot there. And if we see there, that lines up with that seam. So I want to pop a pin in there. So if you do the same on the other side, you'll end up by matching all of that neck band up. You may need to possibly um, stretch a little bit just to get it to fit. But um, yeah, if you follow those markings, I really hope that that shows uh, how it's done. OK, I finished pinning all of my neckline. So you can see there. Just make sure um, you check that all of your pins have been repositioned because the last thing you want to do is start putting this through the sewing machine and realize there's like a hidden pin in between the layers um, ask me how i know <laughs> so um yeah i've pinned that all in place and just to kind of give you the overall look once obviously that's sewn up and you turn it the right way out then that is going to be what your neckline is going to look like 
So what I'm going to do is, now usually I'm um, an overlock sort of person when it comes to necklines. I normally directly just overlock, but because of, as you can see, how many layers we've got going on here, I don't want to pop it through the overlocker straight away because I think these layers could shift around quite a bit. So I am going to zigzag um, stitch the whole way around, check it, make sure I'm happy, and then I'm going to overlock. Okay, neck band is in. You can see there, and then if I show you on the inside, so I have done the zigzag stitch and then overlocked it as well. Now the instructions say to top stitch the neckline down. Now I know a lot of you are gonna probably think I'm very odd, but I don't tend to um, stitch my neck bands down. I find that sometimes doing that, I find sometimes can cause it to distort a little bit. Uh, I mean, each to their own. I've done it with some tops and it's worked out beautifully, but I actually quite like the look of this without it being top stitched. And my neck band, I'm not sure if you can see, even without pressing it, just naturally falls down. Um, so it's quite secure. And I just kind of think if I was to top stitch around the neck, I actually quite like how these lines lead up to the neck band. I'm kind of thinking I don't want to like add in and start crossing over on some of those. So I'm not going to top stitch the neckline down. I'm just going to leave it as is. But if you want to top stitch, absolutely go ahead. Um, I know I'm probably in the uh, minority of people that don't um, always top stitch down their neck bands. It's like the t-shirt I'm wearing. Um, I haven't top stitched this down at all. And the neck band always sits really nice and flat. I think it does depend on the pattern a lot of the time. But um, yeah, I'm just kind of thinking if I top stitch this, I just don't think I'm going to get the look that um, I prefer. So I'm going to leave it without top stitching and uh, move on to the next step, which I believe is the sleeves. Right, I've got both sleeve pieces here with the fabric right side up. So it's just a case of folding them in half, both of those and stitching down the ends. So one down here, one down this side. I'm just gonna put those directly through my overlocker, but if you want, you can just zigzag it or zigzag and overlock, entirely up to you. Um, I'm just gonna overlock it and then I'll move on to the next step. Okay, so just off camera, I've just um, overlocked those um, arms. So the next bit is to get the cuff pieces. So on the cuff pieces, you do have a lot of these circles to mark. And I think that is because you need to create that thumb hole cuff. So on the wrong side of the fabric, I'm going to uh, get those marked with my green chalk pen. OK, so I've marked my um, little dots there with my chalk. And now what we want to do is we want to um, fold these in half uh, right sides together. So currently they're wrong side up. So just flip it round and fold it in half. Flip it and fold it. So your markings are on this side. And so the instructions say you need to sew in between different points. So I'll just do a little close up for that bit. OK, so I've just done a little close up here. Hopefully you'll be able to see my little dots along here. And the instructions are saying that you need to leave a gap here and a gap here. So the way that I've sort of pinned it uh, just helps me when I'm sewing. So I need to sew down here, stop here, and then start again here and sew down here, stop there, leave a gap, start here and sew down the end. So these two areas don't get sewn because when you fold the fabric um, to create the cuff, that's going to be where your little thumb hole is. So you do that on both uh, cuffs and I will show you what that looks like afterwards. Okay, so I have sewn that up. I don't know how well you'll be able to see, uh, but I've got a gap here and a gap here. I've changed my thread on my machine to uh, 
the matching black because I know um, this is going to get quite a lot of stretch this seam and you really want to make sure that your stitches don't um, show through if you're using a different colour. So I've been using cream for the main part of the fabric but um, yeah honestly it is worth that little bit of effort to change the thread. I mean I know I'm one of those people I'm quite lazy I don't want to change my thread unless I have to. But this part I really do recommend that you get a good match for your fabric. So now we've left those gaps. Once we turn this out the right way, you want to open up these seams. Um, I'll probably go out and give them a press, but I just wanna show you just what it looks like when you do that. So you open up those seams and you bring those in together and then you bring everything else around. Obviously you would pin all of the, uh, the edges and things. but what you would be left with is a thumb hole. So when you wear the cuff, you will have that little thumb hole. So I'm gonna go out and actually press uh, those seams open properly so everything matches. And then, uh, yeah, I'll do exactly the same with this one. And then I'll have two cuff pieces ready for the next step. Okay, so I've now got my two cuffs with the uh, thumb holes. And what I need to do now is um, if you, again, black is not the best fabric to show, but can you see there, I've got um, those two seams and they are currently quite loose. They need to be um, sewn together. So the pattern is recommending that you slip stitch. So I do recommend if you are not familiar with slip stitching or you just want to have um, a little helping hand, go onto YouTube and there are loads of videos which will show it in a lighter colour fabric with a contrasting thread and it will be a lot easier to understand. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is I've got my uh, black thread um, on here on my needle and so I'm going to um, stitch these together um, so I'm going to start off by popping it in within the seam allowance I have absolutely no idea if you're gonna be able to see any of this and bring that out and then I've got it on a loop so I'm just gonna loop it in itself just to lock it in and then I'm gonna feed again just within that seam allowance um, and go along and feed through a little bit there and then go across directly across again slip it through a little bit there oh hooked on my pin okay and then again just feed it through the seam allowance there and over as I say I have absolutely no idea whether you are going to be able to see this but what that does is it closes the gap there so what I will do is I will find a um, YouTube tutorial which I find really helpful and I will link it in the description box down below um, but yeah, if you do that on both sides of this and again, same on the other cuff. So it just means that um, all of this seam is closed up. So we have those cuff pieces now finished and we need to attach them to the sleeves. So uh, your sleeve pieces, you want to turn uh, right side out. So you've got your sleeve the right side out and then you've got your um, cuff. Now there is a notch on the cuff and there is a notch on your sleeve. So you just wanna make sure that you get that notch lined up because you don't necessarily want the seams um, to match because you need your 
thumb hole in the right place. So you wanna make sure that the notches match first. Okay, so I'm hoping you'll be able to see this. So I've got my cuff piece there. Now, can you see the seam of the arm is here? The um, thumb hole is off the side. So you're not lining up this seam and this seam. You're focusing on that notch and then getting the rest of it to fit round. You will have to stretch this cuff piece quite a bit to get it round there. You can see there that it's not a smooth finish. It does have to stretch. And then um, before you sew it, just because I want to kind of demonstrate what I mean, if you turn it out the right way on there, now you'll see on the arm, there is a single notch on one side and there is a double notch on the other side. So double notch means the back of the arm, single notch means the front of the arm. And so, let me take my cardigan off for demonstrating this. If I was to put my arm through this, so I've got the single notch gonna be at the front, double notch at the back, so the single notch there, that when I pop my arm, just be careful uh, for the pins, <laughs> when I pop my arm through it, can you see there that I've got my seam for my sleeve at the bottom, but then it lines up perfectly because it's off center, because you've lined up the notch rather than the seams, that your thumb hole fits in the comfortable and right position. So I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's what you can kind of see what the arm <laughs> is going to look like. So uh, just carefully take that off and be careful of any pins. Uh, so I'm going to get that sewn in. I'm going to sew with a zigzag stitch and then overlock it again, just because there's quite a lot of stretching with this. And I just want to make sure that I'm as accurate as can be. Oh, might even put my cardigan back on because it is cold today. <laughs> and uh, yes, I'll get that sewn and I will show you those once I finish that step. <laughs> zigzagged all around and then overlocked so now we have two very nice sleeves okay so we need to attach them to the bodice okay so we have our front bodice and we want to turn that inside out so the main bodice is inside out and you'll notice uh, that in the armholes you've got single notches at the front and double notches at the back. So do you remember when I was trying on that sleeve? So yeah, single notch at the front, double notch at the back. So you wanna find your sleeve um, with your single notch, which is right side out, and you want to basically feed it through to the arm. And so you want to, first off, you wanna match up the bottom of the arm uh, seam to the side seam. Line those up and get those pinned. And then you want to find the single notch and line that up and pin it. Same with the double notch and then you fit that sleeve in to that hole. So again, you probably might need to ease a little bit of it, um, but yeah, see how you get on. Um, it should be reasonably okay because again, knit fabric, it's a lot easier to uh, ease things in when it's knit because you've already got that bit of stretch. So I'll get those pinned in on both sides and show you what that looks like. So that is both sleeves set in. So we can see here, that um, I've pinned it all around and yeah, I thought it actually went in really nicely. 
So on both of those, so I'm going to zigzag first and then overlock, uh, as I say, just because I want to make sure that I don't get any uh, puckers or anything like that. And I will show you that once I've finished. Okay, so the sleeves are now all set in after I've sewn them. I uh, didn't press the record button when I was meant to do my little fast forward on the sewing machine, but um, just like the cuffs, you're sewing them in on the round. Um, yes, so there we go. It's looking really, really nice. It's almost finished. I just need to do the bottom hem band. So let me grab those pieces. Okay, so you've got four band pieces. You just need um, two of them for the time being. And what we need to do is we need to put them right sides together. So I've got right face uh, up on one and then the other one. So there we go, right sides together. And it is saying to stitch along this um, section. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get it all pinned and then I'm going to stitch all the way along here. And I'm going to do that for um, the other set as well. done so I've sewn across these areas here and then the instructions say just to cut that seam allowance down so I'm going to cut that in half for both of these Okay, so that is now um, cut down to a shorter seam allowance and it's asking you to um, understitch. So that is where you will open up the band and um, you want to almost top stitch. Um, so you want to make sure that you're, again, black, it's not the easiest thing to show. You want your seam allowances to fall one side. So if I was to push it that side, when you then turn it around the other way, whichever way the seam allowance is sort of resting against, so the seam allowance is over here, that's the side you wanna stitch down. So it's a little bit like what we were doing with the top stitching, but it's actually going to be that that forces it down to then when you press it, that that um, stitching line will be just on the inside. So I'm gonna do that and then I will show you a little bit um, of what that looks like. So this is what I like to do. I like to pin my seam allowance. So again, black, I'm sorry, it's not the best, um, but you can sort of see there, hopefully, put it in the light, uh, that the seam allowance is this side and I've pinned it so that I know that that seam allowance isn't going to be moving anywhere. And I want to be stitching really close to this line. I'm going to pop it in the machine and then I will hopefully get a bit better light for you. Okay, so I've got it to a bit which I'm hoping you'll be able to see a bit more. So this is where the seam line is. My um, seam allowance is on this side. So you can see I've pinned it and I can also feel that is where the seam allowance is. And then I've got like a little red dot just here on my machine. And I'm using that as a guideline to um, allow me to uh, do the understitching. And as I'm doing it, you can probably see there's like it's quite bumpy. I'm just flattening it and um, not pulling it as such, but just making sure that it's lying flat. So um, yeah, let me take this pin out. Uh, I'll do a few stitches so you can see. Just 
make sure none of it's going to get tucked under. Okay, so I've done a few stitches there. I don't know if I can bring this around. Hopefully you might be seeing the light there that um, I've got this stitching done. And so that means when I go to press it, that um, this line will kind of help in making it really flat. So I'm gonna carry on with this one and do the other one as well. And I'll show you what they look like. So that's now finished. I've understitched and then I've also uh, taken this out and pressed it. So um, if I turn it the right way round, excuse the uh, cat hairs, um, you can see now we've got a lovely, nice, clean and flat edge that is really nice and flat, if you can see there. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so my bands are both done. Now in the instructions, it does say that um, you can baste the top part of it, so all along the top, if you wanna put it together that way. I think I'm gonna be all right just with pins, so, um, cause I'm now gonna attach it to the bodice. So if we grab the bodice and I'm going to do the back band first. So I'm going to lie the uh, back face up. Okay, so I just wanna work with this area. If I grab one of the bands, first off, you wanna make sure what way you're going to be lying it because you want the bit that you've just done with this um, understitching, you want that to be on the inside. So on the outside, it shows this nice flat edge. So you just wanna be careful which way you're putting it up. So first off, you've got um, two notches I'm not sure if you can see there, got a notch here, a notch here, and that's in the middle of the band. And on your back piece um, here, you've also got two notches. So you wanna make sure that you line those up and pop a pin in. Okay, so I've done that there. And then what you want to do is continue with this, pinning it until you get to the end of the band and just over where the side seam is. I'll give you a little close up once I've done that. Okay, so I've got that all pinned in place now. And um, yeah, just in regards to the end pieces, I just want to kind of explain that um, a little bit. So if I grab the pattern piece here, you'll see that um, you've got um, this band here, which this is what we're attaching this line onto the bottom of the jumper. And then you've got this sort of angle before it then sweeps down into the curve. And so what you wanna do is this bit here, you wanna line up with the side seam. So if I can show you on here. So where, it, um, where that point is, that's where you wanna put it on that side seam there. And then this, angle here you want to continue on so you need to sort of bend it so that it carries on past that side seam so I hope that makes sense so you've um, you've pinned it all along here and then this bit you almost want to kind of then stretch the fabric up to make it straight to then carry on so I'm really hoping that uh, <laughs> that does make some sense. So again, on the other side, you'll see up to that point, you've got the side seam there, and then you've angled that last little bit, just a little bit further past the side seam. Okay, so I'm gonna get that all stitched in place, and then I can get the other one um, to lie over the top of it. So that is all sewn up. Now, if I turn it the other way, you should be able to see there that, oh, 
to show it very well. Um, but there we go. That is that bit which we've added, you know, along so that it creates that sort of curved part of the hem. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to now work on the front section. So I'm going to put my bodice now with the front side facing up and just working on this hem section. So you want to grab your band and then what you want to do is again at the front there are some notches at the front and you want to mark up the middle of your band with those notches. So now again when I get to the end of my band I want to line that up um, so again it's this pointy bit here with the side seam. We have a lot of layers going on here. <laughs> Hope this will show. Can you see that I've overlapped it? So I've got my side seam here. So I've rested um, that band section. You can probably see that shape that point up to the side seam and then I've kind of stretched this to then go along the rest of the hem and that then creates that lovely little folded over hem. I think it's going to look really pretty. So I'm going to get that all finished pinning and then I'm going to whack that on the sewing machine and then once I've done that I'm going to overlock all of the bottom and then we're done. <laughs> this <laughs> nice and cozy neckline. I'm really liking um, the sleeves with those thumb holes. They are so cozy. And um, yeah, the pockets I mentioned before, really, really nice. The only thing that's I think maybe just slightly, maybe not 100%, is that the hem does tend to sort of um, flare out a little bit. I mean, it's not bad at all, but um, I'm used to jumpers where the hem band sort of sucks it in a little bit, so it's a bit more fitted, whereas this is kind of quite loose, but I still like it. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. And yeah, I think it does look quite similar to the uh, one I was going for on the picture. So yeah, I do like this little hem detail as well which I'm sure you probably can't see there but where it kind of wraps over and I do like that I like the colour contrast as well and yeah it's really nice and warm and cozy <laughs> so um my sort of final thoughts I guess on the pattern is um yeah I really like it I think I would more than happily make it again I would say that uh, this is probably more of an intermediate um pattern if you wanted to make a jumper for the first time, probably wouldn't recommend necessarily this one, um, just because there are a lot of pattern pieces, you've got top stitching to do, um, the hem band, there are a lot of layers. Um, so you've kind of got to be used to going through quite a few layers. I mean, my faff, Quilt Ambition 630, oh, it's just wonderful. It just flies through it. It's lovely. <laughs> um, the overlocker, I think on the really thick bits, did struggle a tiny bit. <laughs> but my sewing machine, bang on, absolutely perfect. So, um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed making this. And I would recommend uh, for everyone to give it a go. Um, just because it's got those details on it. It's just, I haven't sewn a neckline like this before. I think this is the first time I've done thumb holes in a jumper. I have been tempted to do thumb holes in a jumper, but I've never actually done it. Um, and they've come out really nicely. And yeah, as I say, that little detail on the hem is just really pretty. I love the little top stitching with the pockets. I just think that's a really, really nice design. 
it. So yes, overall, absolutely pleased as punch. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a little twirl for you so you can hopefully see some of the details a little bit better. If you did enjoy watching this video, please do give me a thumbs up. And if you enjoy uh, following along with me with my sew alongs and things, if you haven't subscribed already, I'd really appreciate it if you could, because then um, I can keep you guys up to date on YouTube and it comes up automatically on your feed and helps with my numbers to uh, obviously get sharing with other people that might not have heard of me. And if you have found this tutorial helpful, if you have been sewing the pattern, if you um, did want to buy me a cup of tea as a little thank you, I do have a Ko-fi account. Uh, so I will link that down in the description box below if you would like to uh, give me anything for that. So I really hope you enjoyed and uh, yeah, I'll insert those twirls and I will see you soon in my next video. Take care. Bye.